what is up guys in today's video we're going to be going over how we can create a full tic-tac-toe app in swift ui and it's going to look like this so to start the game you can just click on any circle you want and it's going to place an x and it's also going to have a nice flip effect so let's try to go for the cross but we've been blocked so we'll try again and if we want to win of course we click here and it's going to say x has won then we will have the option to reset the game or to also cancel. And if you cancel, you'll have the option here to reset. So both ways the user can reset the game if they want to continue. Now, if we go ahead and try to lose, which I believe is quite difficult. So we can also end up with a draw. And if there's a draw, of course, we should go ahead and reset the game so that we can continue playing the entire game. And if O wins, it's going to say O has won. So it's a very simple project, but it's going to help you a lot with learning how SwiftUI actually works. And to get started, we want to go ahead and create a new empty project in Xcode. And once you end up with a screen similar to this one, you want to go ahead and click on your sidebar and hold Command plus N. So that we can go ahead and create a new SwiftUI file. And we're going to call this one XO button because this will be what the user clicks on to make an X or an O appear. So here we can go ahead and click on create and it's going to return to us a view that looks exactly identical to the content view. Now to get started inside here, we want to go ahead and create a binding variable. So binding var, which is going to be the letter we insert. So either an X or an O and that's going to be of type string. Then we have to go ahead and create state private var degrees and that's going to equal 0, 0.0 and this will be used for the animation with the rotation 3d effect so just make sure you have that in case you want that cool coin flip animation and of course we're going to get an error immediately in the preview because we need to provide a constant for the letter since right here we said that the program should have a binding variable but we have no way to actually provide that when previewing so we're going to have to go here and type in dot constant and as the value, we can just put in X and let's insert letter as well. So the letter is going to be the constant of X. Now inside the body, we can go ahead and create a Z stack. And the first thing we want to create inside here is a circle. And it's going to have a frame of 120 followed by 120. And we do not need the alignment so we can get rid of that. And a foreground color of dot blue. Then below that, we will create another circle, which will have a frame of 100 and 100, and the foreground color will be set to dot white. And finally, let's go ahead and add a text, which will be a text of letter. So as you can see, we have an X in there as a preview. Otherwise, it's going to be an O if the bot decides to make a move. So with that being done, we can go ahead and modify the font dot system size which is going to be set to 50 and I'm just going to make it bold now every time the user clicks on this button we want to give it that rotation effect so to do this on the Z stack we have to go ahead and provide a rotation 3d effect with dot degrees and inside here we just insert the degrees and for the axes we need to replace the X with a 0 the Y with a 1 and the Z with a 0 and then right below, since we're going to have multiple tap gestures, we're going to have to use a simultaneous gesture. So dot simultaneous gesture. And this is going to take a tap gesture. So tap gesture, which will take on ended. And inside here, we can open up a pair of curly brackets. Although right before that, we're going to type in underscore in. And inside here, we can insert our code. And I might just put this below to make it look a bit more clean. So once this tap gesture ends, we want to go ahead and type in with animation and we're going to ease in and give it a duration of 0 0.25. Then we need to specify what we want to animate. And here I'll type in self dot degrees and that's going to be deducted by 180. So now if we go ahead and run the program, every single time we click on this X, we should have a coin flipping effect, just like that. And if you don't like that, of course, you can go ahead and change it to the Y or to the X. 
and you'll have it the other way, which also looks pretty good. But after creating this view, we can go ahead and stop the emulator and continue to the content view and close the sidebar. Now, the first thing we have to do in here is create a few variables. So the first one is at state private var moves. And we need to keep account of nine possible moves. And this is just going to be an empty array of strings. So we're going to create nine strings because each time a user makes a view, it's going to replace the empty part with either an X or O. And then we will use this array to compare the X's and the O's to see what are the correct combinations to actually win the game. So go ahead and create three, and then you can go ahead and duplicate this two more times until you have nine in total. Then we will create at state private var end game text which will tell the user what happens at the end of the game, who won, and so on. And we're just going to call it tic-tac-toe for now, because it won't be displayed. Or actually, it will be displayed at the top of the screen. But let's continue to the third at state, private var, which is going to be called game ended, which will be a boolean set to false. As soon as the game ended boolean becomes true, we're going to show an alert dialog which will tell the user whether they won or lost. And they can reset the game if they want, or they can look at the results of the game that they just played. And finally, we need to go ahead and create a private var of ranges, which is going to equal a list of ranges. And the first one is going to be for the first row, and that's going to be zero, two less than three. And very similarly, we're going to do the same all the way up until nine. So from three to less than six and from six to less than nine. And you'll see this being used very shortly. It's just going to simplify the code so we don't have to create duplicates. Now, the first thing we have to create inside here is a V stack. And right here, we're going to go ahead and create a text field and it's going to have end game text as the text. So it should say tic-tac-toe on the screen. Then we want to attach an alert to this text. It doesn't really matter where you attach this alert. It's just important we attach it somewhere. And I decided to attach it to this text box just because it was there. And inside here, we will provide the end game text and is presented is going to be set to the binding value of game ended. And we also want to specify an action. Then we want to go ahead and open this with a closure and provide a button. And the button is just going to say reset. And the role is going to be dot destructive to warn the user that all the information is going to be reset. And we want to provide an action, which I just called reset game. And it's not going to include the parentheses because we're not calling it here. We want to make sure that we can call it, but we should not call it inside the button. That's why we do not include these parentheses. But you're probably going to get an error because this was not defined. So right under the body, you can go ahead and type in function, reset game like that. And we're just going to say to do so we can fix this later and make sure you spell it correctly like that. Now, right below that, we're also going to go ahead and create a custom button, which says reset. And the action is just going to be reset game. And actually, to simplify this, we can just go ahead and type in action and type in reset game and remove this closure entirely. Now, in between the text and the button, we're going to include two spaces like that because we're going to make a sandwich, or in other words, we're going to insert the game inside the two spaces. We want it to be in the center of the screen, and we want to have reset at the bottom and the title at the top. So this part might seem a bit confusing at first because we're going to deal with a lot of for each loops and duplications that are being done by these ranges, but just bear with me, it will become self-explanatory eventually. So inside here, we'll go ahead and type in for each and we're going to provide the ranges followed by an ID with backslash dot self because each range is unique. And for each range in this list of ranges, 
we're going to go ahead and create an H stack. So now it's going to loop through these three ranges so that we can use them inside the H stack. So inside the H stack, we're going to create another for each loop. And the reason we created the ranges is so that we can insert each range inside here. So the first for each loop is going to be the range of one or zero to three, and then from three to six, and then from six to nine. And each number is unique again, so we can just go ahead and type in id backslash dot self. And here we just type in i in and insert the code we want to duplicate. For example, the first thing we want to add is an XO button. And that actually requires a letter, which is a binding variable. So here we just go ahead and type in cache symbol moves at the index of i. So that's going to give us three circles that we can tap on. And in fact, if you run the simulator, you're going to notice that each time you tap on a circle, it's going to flip. Of course, all that's missing is actually inserting the X and the O's into the system and computing whether we won or we lost. So on the XO button, we're going to go ahead and type in dot simultaneous gesture. And it's going to be exactly the same as the other one. So just go ahead and open it like this add a tap gesture on ended underscore in. And inside here, we're going to create another function that's going to register what the user has input. So player tap at the index of I. Now let's go ahead and create that function as well. So here we'll type in function player tap, which is going to take an index of type integer. And again, we're going to do double slash to do because every time we tap on one of these circles, again, we want to populate our array over here with X's and O's. And this is going to translate to the X's and O's being displayed on our tic-tac-toe board. But we can actually go ahead and clean this up a bit. So we're going to put those together and put this spacer together as well. So this is the body. This is all we need for the body. Now let's actually go down and take care of creating the functions. So the first function we should take care of is the reset game function. And this one is very simple. All we have to do is type in end game text and change it back to tick tack toe. And we're also going to reinitialize the moves. So this list is actually going to be populated with X's and O's. And we just want to make sure it goes back to being absolutely empty. So we just copy and paste that and insert it here. So that will take care of reinitializing the game so that we can play once again. Now let's go ahead and take care of the player tap. So here we have to go ahead and type in if moves at the index is equal to nothing. That means there are no X's or O's on that space. And that also means we can insert something there. Then we're going to go ahead and type in moves at index is going to equal an X. So we're just going to be X's for every game we play. And at the end of this, we also want the bot to move. So we'll type in bot move. And this is going to be another function that we will create right below here. So function bot move. And it's going to be another to do. And every time the player is actually tapping, we also want to go ahead and check if the player has one or if the bot has one. But we're going to have to create another function for that. So right now we're just going to add another to do, which says check, check if player or bot has one. But right now, if we go ahead and refresh the emulator, we can go ahead and tap on circles and X's will appear wherever we place them. Of course, we also want the O's to appear. Otherwise, this just becomes a drawing game, which actually looks pretty cool. But let's go ahead and handle the bot move. Or as a lot of the Swift developers like to call it, the AI. So here we'll go ahead and type in variable available moves, which is going to be an array of integer. And that's going to equal an empty array. Then we also want to calculate how many moves there are left. So var moves left is going to equal zero initially. Now inside here, we'll type in for move in moves. And we will check if the move is empty. That means the bot can place a circle there. 
So here we'll type in available moves, dot append, moves left. And each time we go through this loop, we're going to go ahead and type in moves left plus equals one. And it's very important we also tell the bot not to make a move if the field is completely filled. Otherwise, the program's going to crash because of the index error. So to do this, we'll go ahead and type in if available moves dot count is not equal to zero, then we can go ahead and say moves available moves dot random element. And we're going to guarantee that this is not nil. And we're going to say that is equal to O. So now if we go ahead and refresh the emulator, you should see that the bot is playing tic-tac-toe with us. And the game actually functions pretty well already. We're just missing the functionality that says that either we won or the bot won. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So you may have noticed that we've already been crowding our content view with a lot of stuff. And since this is a simple project, that's perfectly fine but we are going to go ahead and create a new file. So just go ahead and hold Command plus N and it's going to be a Swift file. And we're just going to call this one Utils. So inside here, we're going to insert the check winner function. So here we go ahead and type in function, check winner. And it's going to take a list of type string and a letter of type string. And then it will return to us a Boolean, which tells us whether it's a winner or not. So one of the biggest challenges you'll probably have trying to create tic-tac-toe is finding the winner algorithm. And it's fairly simple if you Google it. That's all I did actually. And you're more than welcome to copy this part or figure it out yourself. It's a nice puzzle if you do it yourself, but to save time, let's go ahead and create it. So winning sequences is going to equal an array of different arrays. So the first array is going to be of 0, 1, 2, and then 3, 4, 5, and then 6, 7, 8. So as you might have imagined, these are the horizontal rows. And then of course we need to get the diagonal rows. So to do this, we go ahead and type in 0, 4, 8, and we'll go ahead and type in two, four, six. And finally, we want the vertical rows. So here we can go ahead and do zero, three, six, one, four, seven, and two, five, eight. And once again, you're more than welcome to copy this from my GitHub repository to save time. These are just the rows you need to recognize that a player has won. So the horizontal rows, the diagonal rows, and the vertical rows. Now below that, we can go ahead and type in for sequence in winning sequences. Each time we do that, we want to create a score variable, which is set to zero. And then for the match in sequence, we're going to go ahead and check if the list at the index of the match is equal to the letter then we can go ahead and increment it. So score plus equals one. This means the list at the index of zero, if it is an X, we're going to increment it by one. If the same thing happens at here, if this is also an X and this is also an X, we're going to continue incrementing the score by one. And the goal of all of this is to check if the score ever reaches three, because once it reaches three, it means we have three in a row, which effectively means we won the game or the bot won the game. So inside here, we can type in return true. And at the bottom, we need to return false in case nothing happens, in case there are no winners. So that just about covers the check winner function. Now let's go ahead and add it to our content view. So let's change to that and close the sidebar. Then we just have to go down here to the player tab and type in four letter in all the possible letter combinations, which in this case is only X and O. So with these two letters, we're going to go ahead and say, if check winner, because it returns a Boolean and the list is going to be the moves 
the current moves that we've made until this point, and the letter is going to be set to the current letter in this array. So if it turns into true, we're going to change the end game text to backslash letter has one. We're going to set game ended to true, and we're going to break out of this loop. And just like that, we've added the final piece of functionality required to make our tic-tac-toe app function perfectly. So now if we go ahead and refresh this emulator, we can go ahead and play a game of tic-tac-toe just like this. And it's going to say X has won. And if we want to play again, we type on reset and try again. This time O has won because somehow we messed it up. And we can click on cancel and we can reflect on our life choices or we can go ahead and continue the game by resetting and trying again. So as you can see, it was actually very simple to create a tic-tac-toe app and I hope this video helped. Of course, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to look at them. Otherwise, with that being said, as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.